It's uh, 2.05, actually 2.06 in the morning, West Coast time. It's the 8th of November, 2023. We're John C. Roseman, California. I'm flabbergasted. The House of Representatives actually managed to break the First Amendment. Apparently the House had voted to censure Representative Rashida Tlaib in regards to her Israel-Hamas rhetoric. <laughs> She's Muslim. And she was trying to give her own viewpoint in regards to how Israel had been treating the Muslims and how this whole situation is. And apparently she wasn't pro-Israeli enough for the House. Most of them decided, including, well, actually most of their Republicans and, and Democrats, had decided that they were going to be pro-Israeli at this point and deny her First Amendment rights. They censured her, basically to put a gag on her face. She can represent, she can vote. That's about it. But she's going to debate, forget it. They don't want to hear from her. Adam Schiff was the same way. Representative Adam Schiff was the same way when the Trumplicants and the GOP decided to censure him because of what he was saying concerning about the insurrection, him being on the cabinet of the uh, January 6th. And the Trumplicants didn't like him. It's not liking him personally. It's, Or maybe it was. I don't know. But they censured him as well. He could talk on major networks and pick him up. But when it comes down for talking on the floor, I haven't heard him in a long while because he's been censured by the current Congress. He is trying to run for Senator Dianne Feinstein, uh, former Senator Dianne Feinstein, God rest her soul. He's trying to get that district there. And a few others are gunning for it as well for the California Senate. <laughs> At least in the Senate, he won't be censured. It's not that I know of. But in the House, yeah. We got one year left before our election, and he's campaigning hard in California, but he's also do trying to do his job. But he can't do his job when it comes down for laying out his own opinions. Because he had been basically given a gag order by the House of Representatives. Same thing like Representative uh, Talib. Do I... What's my opinion on this damn thing? I'd like to have the entire Republican Party gagged. All of them censored. But the ones who actually supported her no problem. Does this mean I'm anti-Israeli? No, I'm, I'm pro-First Amendment. Even she should have a, an option to, to speak, and she can speak on the networks. She just can't speak on the House floor. She can speak outside the House floor. She can have conferences that way. She can talk to people about it, but, but not where it's needed the most, recorded live, on record, or even on tape for the public. So she has to make her comments outside. They haven't completely stripped her of her First Amendment rights to do so. There's no way in hell they can do that. Unless, of course, they're going to be changing the law, and that still needs Senate approval, and that needs presidential approval on that one. They're not going to do that. But they basically silenced her on the floor. What did she say that pissed them off? Well, she doesn't support Hamas, but she supports the Palestinians in their cause. I mean, basically, Israel is being more of a bully at this point. Now, a long time ago, yeah, they were persecuted, prosecuted, executed, without a trial or anything else, but just for them being Jewish. And now... 
Anti-Semitism is running amok like crazy. I mean, the Jews needed a homeland. United Nations tore out Palestinian, uh, Palestine and put the Israeli settlers in there. And they, they were supposed to have a two-party, but they didn't. <clears throat> the Israelis got too strong, multiplied, and became more dominant than anything else people have seen. More dominant. To where they're going to be dictating terms to the Palestinians. They'll take over the Gaza. As Netanyahu, Netanyahu wanted. He didn't say what, clearly what his military objectives were except to get rid of Hamas. And basically he was going to get rid of the Palestinian Authority, basically. Overruling them. Except maybe in civilian matters, but anything else? The Israelis will occupy. They're going to have an uprising. Worse. They want to get rid of Hamas, or they're trying to get rid of the idea of Hamas. The problem is they can't get rid of the idea of Hamas. It's already been settled. It's already been established in there. They can get rid of all the physical entities, but it's already been there, and you already got a doctor nation left and right. Thank you very much, Israel, for that one. Yes, you have a right to defend your homeland. But to exterminate people in the process, you just became Hitler. Yeah, I'm probably going to get censured on this one here, too, by Facebook. What I'm saying is they became their own worst nightmare. You're going to be going after an enemy so much and so hard, you become the enemy. And apparently there's reaction out there that they are putting out. They're fine with that. They said, never again, never again, never again, never again. This is our moment. This is our 9-11. They would have had a 9-11 moment unless they have been pushing the Palestinian people so damn hard that they had no choice but to react, and they reacted like crazy. Do people keep forgetting what history is all about? Hell, even England had, had issues with Ireland, with Northern Ireland. Southern Ireland was part of the British Empire. But Northern Ireland separated because of religion. Protestant versus Catholicism. And they waged war in London and everywhere else in England. Call them the bloody IRA. Well, when you have the British pushing down on you. Where do you think YouTube came up with the song Bloody Sunday? Always wondered about that one. I always wondered about that one. Cranberries also came out with uh, <sighs> zombie song. You listen to them, and you'd hear this. You wonder about where they're coming from the lyrics. Well, they're getting it from history. But they either, well, they learned about or something else. But you know right in front of our face. Back in the 60s when we were going through the Vietnam crap. The ideal versus reality check. And a lot of people who are getting sick and tired of the Vietnam War, the body bags, and not to mention what was going on over there when they actually found out. And their protest songs were going hot and heavy on that one. group called War had the song called War. Marvin Gaye was doing songs of, of this. Kingston Trio was doing it. Um, a lot of folk singers and rock and rollers were putting in their two cents. Woodstock. There are 
things in history that remind us of what happened in different times. We sing them, but we don't realize it unless we learn the history. And then it clicks. It clicks. Things happening too hard and too fast. We can't understand why. We don't like the actions. And the actions what Israel had taken was basically flatten Gaza. We'll start from the north, we'll head down south. Didn't have to declare it. They'd already declared a long time ago on that one. And he was a pain in the ass about it. But we are supposed to be allies with Israel, the United States. Which means we support their we support them. But did we really support the military actions of trying to eliminate the Palestinians in the process? You use a bomb to get rid of one particular general when you do a lot of collateral damage? Does that make sense? Hamas, they're a pain in the ass. Yes, they are. They are a royal pain in the fucking ass. Just like ISIS. Just like the Taliban. I don't hold it against the people. I hold it against the governments. If they want to eliminate another race, then they are no bigger, better than the other autocrats out there. What I don't like, there is no communication. There is a lot of anger, a lot of rage. More polarization at this point. A few days ago, the example was clear in Ventura County when one guy died in a rally. And they're still trying to figure it out. They wanted clear-cut evidence if it was a hate rage or not, if it was a hate crime. Two opposite groups on other ends of the, other ends of the intersection. Diagonally. And one guy decides to cross the street. And it was reported. Well, it was not recorded, though. If they had traffic cams to record it, they would have captured it on film. It would have been no problem. But with all the people out there with camera phones, did they actually record this damn thing and put it out there, or did they not? And if they had, they wanted to see those videos because they want to make sure that we're dealing with a hate crime or what the hell was it? They made the guy collapse on the ground and die in a hospital overnight. Angry words from a Palestinian and an Israeli supporter. And it was reported that a megaphone was used on the Israeli, thumping him on the head. Making him go to the ground. But he stayed to give a statement to the cops. And the cops are still trying to get the witnesses to verify. Is it going to be the guy's story? Or is it going to be another one's story? Or what happened? Because I know the people in the Israeli side are chomping at the bits. They want justice. They want revenge. They'll call it justice, but they want revenge. I for an eye. The thing is, the Old Testament is in the Torah. <clears throat> and they do preach a lot from the Old Testament. They won't touch the New Testament because it is considered Christian. And they're not Christian. So they have to keep to the faith. Uh, that's fine. I had a friend of mine. He was a family member. He converted. So he could spend time with his wife more and more regarding the holidays and understand her ways. I don't know if he's still that way or not. We hadn't communicated in decades.
But he wanted his family to grow up under Jewish, being converted. Nothing wrong with studying another religion. I understand their aspects. Whether or not if it's comparable to the one the one who grows up under. But it's becoming more and and harder to deal with these days because they hold the religious the religion so hardcore it's not even funny somewhere there had to been a commandment telling us to love one another there had to been something like a God can be seen by a lot of other religions. But they're saying the same entity. They're saying the same spiritual being in their te teachings and writings. But it's gotten worse and worse these days. More polarized. The Christians who swore that they would believe in Christ's teachings would become the bloodiest, angriest bastards around. Because they say this is what Christ would have wanted. And they keep forgetting their own teachings. They'll go back into the Old Testament, but they keep forgetting what Christ kept saying. He was there to not change him, but to reinforce him. But the one commandment above, he was trying to t teach him on the Sermon on the Mount was uh, love one another as you love yourself or somewhere in there, I think in the subtle lines as you love God. And if you love God, then why are you hating your neighbor? Why? Because they don't believe in God. And so, they think God would allow this, would understand this, this rage, this hatred. I suppose even I would be asked, did you support the rage and hatred of what was going on down below? No, but I don't think I did anything else to stop it or to alleviate it. Talk about it, share about it, communicate about it. I didn't do enough on it. I didn't do what was necessary or what it took to fulfill Christ's commandment. He was telling it to the people. He wasn't going to try to say, now you will be my followers. You will be converted because I command you to be so. He didn't say that. It wasn't written that way. And if it was, how come they didn't put it in there in the first place? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why are they trying to kill each other? For what damn reason? People have picked on religion like crazy and used it as martyrdom. Even the Christians back in the, in the medieval times had used it as an excuse and a justification for skull thumping and conversion. You will believe, otherwise you've got two choices. You'll believe, otherwise there's our choices of racks for you. Thank you, Bick. The Inquisition. We're gonna convert your ass or else. We're going to march into the Middle East with our Christian armies and raise forth the cross and use it as a weapon against you. None of them paid attention to Christ's teachings. I think it was Peter or Paul or one of the disciples who actually carried a sword for protection. He was going to use it to defend Jesus at all costs. And 
And Jesus knew this, and Jesus kept telling him, don't do this. He who lives by the sword is going to die by the thing. Do you understand? Even metaphorically, it still applies. We use religion as skull thumping at this point over here. We use religion as conversion. We're going to pretend and we're going to thump on your heads. You will believe otherwise and they'll leave it at that. Our way of justifying conquering people. And it's no wonder some people don't like it. They don't really want to hear it. They don't want to think about it. They don't even want to be part of that. But they can't help it but be part of it. And the others are just as gung-ho and gullible. We're going to support Jesus by violating everything Jesus told us because we're supporting Jesus and his love. And everybody will not stand in our way. basically what happened. That's what's happening. Even in politics. We're going to silence you because you don't believe in the cause. You're not righteous enough. The minority will not have a vote. They will not have a voice. In our government system, you will not have that. Because we say so the majority. Despite the fact that the Constitution was set up to even allow the minority to have their say. What happened to Representative Talib is the quite opposite of what the Constitution guarantees, what people swore an oath to. That they don't care. You know what frightens me is we get into a world of worse than Mad Max. The first movie. Or worse. That nothing. Nothing will be sacred. Nothing. Well, I guess we hold sacred to a different level, don't we? I don't know. I've had pushback on my videos. Granted, I allow them that. I said a long time ago, if you guys got even negative comments, I want to read about it. Because I want to see what the viewpoints are. I appreciate the positive ones. And I also pre appreciate the critical ones. Because I need to see what the viewpoints are. Try to be open-minded. These days, everything's so damn screwed up, I don't even know what's supposed to be the reality check at this point. If Christ was here already, but if we're going by Scripture, he's not going to be, not yet anyway. We're not totally devastated and screwed up right now, and if there's going to be any survivors left, then maybe. But right now, if he actually does show up, how would us, how would the rest of the world react? Okay, how would I react? Uh, let's put that for another video, shall we?